Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. I'm going back to my roots today with a video on Divide et Impera. I've done loads of guides on this fantastic mod from what sub mods to use to how to be victorious in battles. But today I want to do something a little bit different. Throughout all my videos, I've been asked a lot of questions about the mod, what to do here and there. So in this video, I'd like to do a quick fire run through of the three most frequently asked questions in DEI and my answers for them including how do I manage public order? How do I grow my income faster? And how do I deal with politics and diplomacy? Let's get started. DEI is an immense mod that changes so much about base game Rome 2. Campaigns are more complex with things like in-depth population systems, new buildings and technologies, a supply system. Battles as well will last longer because various stats have been buffed and nerfed making the game a true frontline battle with pockets of weaknesses, putting more emphasis on unit diversity and flanking maneuvers more than ever. DEI can be brutal to the newcomer. Even when playing factions like Rome or the Seleucids, you really need to know how to deal with the political system, your neighbors, public order, everything. The smallest oversight can lead to immediate as well as future issues. So let's start with the first big question. This is probably the most common thing people get wrong about in any Total War game, but especially in DEI. But it's very simple to understand the mechanic and how to deal with it. First thing you can do is deploy your characters. If you have a dignitary or champion, get them deployed as they will help with public order and have other positive effects as well. As they grow in experience, you can grow these effects as well to be even more positive. Armies that you have can also be deployed to help with this in the patrol stance. And a nice little tip here is you don't have to limit yourself to the armies you start with. Get recruiting, get a few more generals and deploy them in the patrol. This will not only help with public order, but also over time turn these characters into very skilled generals. The second thing you can do is use political characters. Use the Organize Games option here to get a plus 10 public order effect in the chosen province for a few turns. A nice little boost. Just keep in mind guys that this will become more costly over time the more you do it, but it's a nice tool you can use if you need to. Third thing you need to be aware of is culture. If you let the presence of foreign culture get out of hand, you will have issues. Always try your best to manage local culture with buildings as this will help with long-term public order and once there's a nice bonus from all your efforts, you can increase tax rates or buff yourself for when you enslave prisoners of war, which is very profitable by the way. Finally, and for me the most important point about public order is, as with all Total War games, public order is inversely correlated with tax levels. So lower your taxes, guys, especially at the start of your campaign. You don't really need the money from tax that much. And lowering tax levels gives you that nice public order boost you need. In the long term, having high public order is much more beneficial to having a high tax rate, but having a low public order with that. So keep this in mind, guys. A golden, golden tip here. And this nicely leads on to the second most frequently asked question. So first thing to mention here is at the start of your campaign, I wouldn't really worry about this. What you need to worry about is your neighbors expanding to at least taking full control of your starting province and establishing some non-aggressions before you really start thinking about income. That being said, there are a few things you can do to set yourself up for success. We've already talked about characters, but using certain skills can help with things like increasing local trade or income, and having a high public order directly impacts how much income that province is making, so keep these in mind. But your best friend for income at the start of your campaign especially is trade agreements. You can get a decent boost by sending out a single ship to the world or a character to discover new factions and start engaging them diplomatically. Getting those trade agreements with a faction may reveal other factions as well, which you can ask for trade agreements. If you met 15 factions in your efforts and 10 of them gave you trade agreements that contribute, let's say, 100 income each, that's an extra 1,000 income, guys, which can go a long way, actually. While we're talking about diplomacy, you can also use negotiations as a means to get payments. Whenever you want to get military access, 
non-aggression packs, whatever it is, and the chances of success is at moderate or high, always try to wrangle a payment out of the negotiation. It's important to remember, guys, that DEI is meant to be as realistic as possible. That means that you're never really going to be swimming in money. You'll always want to be fielding the most armies and navies possible, which will eat away at your income. So if you're low, don't panic. Just take the necessary steps to make sure it doesn't dip down into the negative. Finally, guys, the larger your empire grows, the more money it will take to maintain it. And this metric is called empire maintenance, which you can see in the finances section. Keep an eye on this. And when you start recruiting dignitaries and spending skill points on generals, remember to always invest a skill here and there to reduce this cost. Over time, you'll be thanking yourself you did that because high empire maintenance is inevitable and will cripple you if left unchecked. Get those skills invested and make sure you keep it on a tight leash. This is probably the easiest point of the three in this video, but it's important nonetheless and can lead to some nasty consequences if not handled correctly. Let's go over politics first as this one is pretty easy. You essentially don't want your political party loyalties to dip below minus 20. If it does, you're screwed. Easiest way to deal with this is to hire your family as generals and admirals and hire rival characters as diplomats and administrators. That way generals can govern and conquer provinces while rival faction people can go on diplomatic missions and still stay loyal and at some point likely get killed on a mission. You can of course bribe factions and secure their loyalties if things get hairy or use family characters to give them gifts. But honestly, as long as you stick to using them as anything but generals or admirals, you should be fine. Influence is the most important factor for faction politics. So if you don't allow the rival characters to gain influence, then you won't have a problem in the future. In terms of diplomacy and DEI, if you're not engaging your neighboring factions diplomatically, you're doing something wrong. The one thing you absolutely want to avoid no matter what is a multi-front war that your armies cannot handle. This is why, for example, the Rome campaign is such a struggle to start with. With the Etruscans to your north and Pyrrhus to your east, you're a little bit cornered. You need to pick and choose your battles and your wars, guys, but that also means picking and choosing which factions to ally with as well. As I've said before, definitely get as many non-aggression packs and trade agreements as possible, as these will be a good buffer for you and the majority of the factions around you, giving you a nice payment boost and hopefully beginning positive relationships with some of them. For those factions that hate you right away, try to at least bring the relations into the positive. You don't want too many of them hating you, that causes uncertainty, and you'll likely need an army to patrol those borders, which is a waste of an army, really. The best way to try and bring relations into the positive is diplomatically, but also by using characters. By using diplomatic missions, you will likely be able to get some positive relations, plus an added bonus, which sometimes can even be an entire region. Keep doing this, and you'll eventually have good enough relations to have non-aggressions with that faction or even a defensive alliance which is always a good thing basically keep your allies close but your potential enemies closer and just kill off your actual enemies as quickly as possible especially if you're on a multi-front war and that's it guys i always see these three topics come up on forums and reddit and my videos so hopefully i've answered them all in an easy to understand manner and these tips help you with your campaigns Finally, before we end the video here, I want to give you the opportunity to ask me a question. It can be any question about DEI itself, a mechanic maybe you're not sure about, or a question about your campaign, something you're struggling with maybe, and I will answer you. Every single question in the comments section will be answered. I hope you enjoyed this video guys and found it helpful, and if you did, give it a like and absolutely drop your thoughts and any questions at all. Definitely subscribe to the channel for more Total War content, gameplay, and news. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.